All right, folks, it's Fook. And uh, as some of you may know, one of the things I like to do in my spare time is to do a little bit of programming and uh, some data exploration. So what I'm gonna show you today is a free resource where you can run your Jupyter Python notebooks uh, for free. Now you can of course run this uh, on your own machine using Jupyter Notebooks, but uh, I'm gonna show you the free resource. So right now I'm logged into my Google Drive and uh, I am in the Colab Notebook section uh, where all of my online notebooks are kept. But where you wanna go is a, a site that's called colab.research.google.com. Colab just stands for uh, collaboratory. And I'll put a link in the video so you can see it. But uh, I have a couple of notebooks that I've created and I'm just gonna run them and show you how quickly uh, you can do this. All right, so one of the things that I like to do is just to explore the FRED data set. FRED is the uh, Federal Reserve Economic Data Set. They have some 760,000 time series for a bunch of stuff. And uh, you can play around with it if you like, um, but it's, it's just really, really cool if you wanna play around with it, okay? So one of the things that I did with uh, Google Colab was that I built a notebook that looks at the U.S. stock market market cap to GDP. This is something that's also known as the Buffett indicator. Uh, let me go ahead and kind of show you how it works and I'm gonna walk through uh, how I did it. Now, the thing is that this is not really a Python data analytics uh, tutorial. I'm gonna be making use of some pretty common libraries, uh, but if you know a little bit about Python and some of these libraries, you can certainly get this running uh, by yourself. I'm gonna provide the code to the video in my GitHub and you can go ahead and download it. But let me go ahead and just show you uh, how it works. So there's a setup portion where we load our libraries. Um, and then we actually, the next step is to pull data from the Fred. The, from Fred. Uh, this includes things like the Wilshire 5000 full cap price index, GDP data, and, uh, and then do the math. And lastly, we're gonna use Plotly to graph it. So if you're doing this on your own, you can certainly use uh, matplotlib um, if you like. I just prefer Plotly. The reason I prefer Plotly is that it's interactive and then you can style it whatever you, way you want. So you can see here that I can hover over a data point and uh, it basically you know, tells me what time I'm in and all that jazz and I can zoom in, zoom out, what have you, all right? So this is that fame Buffett indicator and right now it's basically indicating that stocks are overvalued. Um, whether they will correct or not, who the heck knows, but uh, this is just an interesting use of FRED data. There are many other things that I'm playing around with using FRED as well as my own data sources, but let's get into how we actually do this, okay? I'm gonna go over this pretty quickly because like I said, this is not a full-on tutorial for Pandas or uh, Plotly or anything like that, but uh, hopefully you can follow along. So the four libraries that we need to import are Pandas, Pandas Data Reader, the DateTime module, and of course, Plotly Express to uh, graph the data. So um, these are the four lines that bring it in. The heart of the work is done in the next section where we're actually pulling the data and then uh, manipulating it to get it into the right format and then calculating that index or, or that ratio, whatever you wanna call it. Um, indicator, I guess, okay? So let me go in this, ahead and expand this and go very briefly and very quickly through what it does. And hopefully you can follow along on your own copy of this notebook once you've downloaded it. This first directive here, just so you're aware, percent percent capture just suppresses output from the notebook so that when you run it, it doesn't display like data frames or other operations just to keep it clean. Uh, the first thing I do is I set a start and an end time to pull data from the fret, from Fred, uh, and I'm starting in January of 1971, and I'm taking it to the end of the year. Now, we're not at the end of the year, but that's fine to have an end time that's beyond today's date. Uh, next step is to pull the Wilshire 5000 full cap price index, and uh, this is the command that actually runs it and loads it into a data frame that's called market cap. Now, the thing to realize is that this is going to be daily prices 
um, at least for later years. You know, if you're looking at early years of this data frame, it may be monthly, there may be some spotty data or whatever, but uh, if you get beyond like 1980, it's daily, right? Uh, then we clean it up with drop NA and uh, convert the index to a daytime object so that we can manipulate it. Same thing with GDP. We grab GDP data from Fred, drop non-applicable values, and make sure that the index is date time. Now, the one thing I want to point out here, actually two things, is that in order to use Fred, like I said, they have 765,000 time series uh, that you can look at and explore, but you need to know the exact name of the data series that you're looking for. So in this case, GDP is pretty easy. It's just GDP, but um, the Wilshire 5000 full price index has this weird name. Some of them have even weirder names. In my own Fred notebook, I have a dictionary that kind of links the name to the actual series itself. And uh, I may share that at some point, but that's not the purpose of this video. So that's number one. You have to know the symbol for the series you're after. The second thing to be aware of is that GDP data comes in a quarterly format uh, on January, April, July, and October but the Wilshire price index is coming as daily data, okay? So by converting the index to a daytime object, one of the things I can do is I can create a quarterly market cap data frame. And then the way I get it to quarterly is I just use my market cap data frame and then I resample it to a three month period. And this last command here basically just says, take the last value in that period uh, and put it into my new data frame. You can use other uh, aggregation formulas. So you can do mean, you can do uh, average, min, max, whatever. The next step is to go ahead and just merge the two data frames. So quarterly market cap and GDP data. And uh, again, set the index to the date column. Lastly, we add, um, we add this little command here because the Wilshire 5000 market cap is based in 1980 USD. So if you read Wilshire's notes, they say that you should multiply the index value by 1.19 billion to get uh, today's dollar. So that's what this is doing. And then lastly, we calculate the actual indicator itself uh, by dividing that quarterly market cap price by GDP and storing it in a new column that I'm calling Buffett indicator. You can call it whatever you, whatever you want. So let's go ahead and close this. And then lastly, this command here uh, sets up the Plotly Express chart. I'm calling it indicator chart and I'm using an area chart, but you can use line or whatever. And then I gave it a title and uh, style it a little bit, but you can style it whatever way you want. And there you go. So if I want to zoom in into you know more current times rather than going back to 1980 on the indicator. I can either use the magnifying glass as part of the Plotly Express chart and zoom in, and then I can get out by just double double clicking, right? So I'm more curious in like the last, you know, whatever, eight years, I can look at that too and see what's going on. Um, the other option is just to go into where you're pulling data and changing the start and end time. All right. That's it, hopefully it was short enough. And uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below and I will try to help you out. Thanks a lot, see ya, bye.